Hello there, I'm attorney Kelly Longton and I want to thank you for watching this video. I'm the founder of Kelly Longton Law where we provide effective estate planning for everyday families. And today I want to talk to you about a somewhat of a controversial or a touchy subject and that's whether your child is being dutiful or are they actually manipulating either you or someone else uh, that is elderly. As parents age and their physical and mental capacities diminish, it is natural for their adult children recognize that their parents' uh, abilities are decreasing, uh, their abilities to deal with finances and to care for themselves. So grown children often step in to help them. And often there's a specific child who will take over the bulk of the responsibilities, such as taking the parent to the doctor's appointments or to the attorney's offices. And as the parent begins to depend on that child more and more, it m may make sense to appoint that child as the trusted decision maker and even to give them a larger inheritance to compensate them for their time. At the same time, the other family members must take extreme care to ensure that the elderly parent is not being exploited by a manipulative caretaker. So let's talk about who's susceptible to financial exploitation. With more people living into their 80s and 90s, elder abuse is a serious and increasingly common problem in our society. Elder abuse can take several forms, such as physical, sexual, emotional, and verbal abuse or caretaking neglect or exploitation. Up to one half of all elder abuse in the United States is financial exploitation, which is what I wanna focus on today. Now, financial exploitation includes outright theft of money and property, illegal transfers of property, identity theft, and misusing a position of trust, such as through a financial power of attorney. Now, research, research has shown that the, there are some characteristics that indicate that an elderly person is more likely to be financially exploited through undue influence. First, you have physical limitations that require them to depend on others to perform their daily living activities, such as home and yard maintenance, personal health and hygiene, preparing meals and paying bills and transportation. There's also mental limitations resulting from medication side effects, dementia, or injury. There's also perhaps they recently experienced the death of a close loved one, such as a spouse or a sibling, or social isolation that results from few families or friends who visit, or perhaps the person's living alone with little or no access to community activities and healthcare services. They could be experiencing anxiety or depression. Um, they could just be generally naive and extremely trusting. Um, a lot of times they don't have a lot of financial, uh, or a lot of knowledge about their financial si situation or little to no experience handling finances, uh, especially if their spouse had recently passed and they were the ones who dealt with all of the assets. Often people who use undue influence to financially exploit an elderly person do not begin helping them with the intent of using the elderly person's trust to manipulate or exploit them. Nevertheless, as time goes on, whether because of resentment or entitlement or another reason, the helper begins to feel justified in helping themselves to the elderly person's money and property. And although it's most often a family member who financially exploits the elderly person through undue influence, financial exploitation can also occur at the hands of any person whom the elderly person trusts, such as a neighbor, fellow member of a religious organization, a housekeeper, or a professional advisor. Now, there's clearly some warning signs that someone has crossed the line into elder abuse. And the first is the, clearly, you know, this speaks for itself, the disappearance of an elderly person's cash or valuable possessions. There's also, if there's unusual charges on the elderly person's credit or debit cards or unusual withdrawals from their bank accounts. There's unexplained transfers of accounts from another institution or a person. Changes to legal documents, such as a power of attorney or a will or a trust by the elderly person naming the caretaker to trusted positions or granting an inheritance 
or a larger inheritance, particularly when such a change goes against what that elderly person previously had expressed. And it's also placing the caretaker's names on accounts of a joint owner or payable on death. Uh, if you see signatures other than the elderly person's signatures, or sometimes there's forged signatures appearing on checks or deeds or credit card applications, um, the caretaker will tend to socially isolate the elderly person to limit their access to communication, whether it's phone or mail or email, and also limiting social visits or not really giving them privacy on the phone when they're speaking with people. And there's also if the elderly person's bills are going unpaid or the elderly person is expressing concern about not having enough money to pay bills when there's sufficient income or other financial resources available. And there's also, you know, you want to be on the lookout for unexplained changes in your elderly person's demeanor or their interests. So I want to talk about how to prevent financial exploitation. And although the estimated annual cost of elder financial abuse is billions of dollars, it regularly goes unreported because the abuser is often a family member or trusted caregiver, and the elderly person is either unaware of the abuse or just too embarrassed or afraid to report it. Yet by being unaware of the warning signs and helping to create a community network around the elderly person, as well as taking careful and appropriate steps, to plan for their decreasing ability to manage their own finances, such as setting up automatic bill pay or creating a power of attorney or a trust, you can greatly reduce these risks. Now, we can help you if you live in Massachusetts or New Hampshire. We can help you take any steps that are necessary to protect yourself as you age or to protect maybe a vulnerable loved one that you might have. So I hope you found this uh, informational about how to protect your, your elderly family member and to make sure that they're not being financially exploited. So I want to thank you for watching. I'm attorney Kelly Longton uh, from Kelly Longton Law, and I look forward to having you watch one of our um, upcoming videos. Have a great day.